John here, and we've got a new sponsor, DistroKid. Now that you've finished your latest Pirate Math SpongeCore Twitch trek, it's time to get it out there so everyone can hear it. DistroKid helps musicians get their music on all the major streaming platforms, and artists keep 100% of their royalties. And because you're a high-gain listener, you get 30% off. Just go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash high gain. That's distrokid.com slash VIP slash high gain. And now DistroKid has an app. The DistroKid app is available for iOS and Android. You can download it at distrokid.com slash app or in the app and play stores. Hey, we'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor, Isotope, makers of software and plugins for audio repair, mixing, and mastering. We use Isotope products here at the High Gain. It's an important part of how we've been able to bottle pure podcast gold week after week. And guess what? Isotope offers one free month of Music Production Suite Pro, which has all the tools you need to mix, master, and repair audio. Also, you can get 10% off all other software using the promo code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. All of this is at isotope.com, I-Z-O-T-O-P-E.com. Oh, hey, it's me, Ed Peterson. Hi, Ed. How you doing? Coming in hot. Yeah. You know, every once in a while I do that, right? Yep. It's the High Game Podcast, John. You get excited. I love it. I'm just sitting here, white knuckle in the chair, just yeah. waiting for that theme song to kick yeah. in. You love it. And then when it does, boom, go time. Go time. Guitars. Guitars. Beautiful West Seattle. I walked up and thought John and Ed should do a little free podcast walk. Yes. Get our blood up, have a little constitutional, right? Yes. And your lovely wife, Monica, offered me a coat because it's just a little chilly. And I walked up in kind of a long sleeve shirt, no coat, and I regretted it about halfway here. Mm. I didn't take her up on it because I'm like... You're hard that way. <laughs> the atmospheric river is coming. Oh, no. Don't tell me that. It's about to slam into the Los Angeles area. Man. One foot of rain. That's wild. Why are there rivers with cars rolling down the river? Yeah. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Yeah, I was just at a guitar show mm. with Uncle Frank. Yeah. Down there in Costa Mesa, California. I regret not going so much. I am so upset with myself. It was kind of fun. It was nice and sunny in a way that was just perfect. We were driving around, and like a lot of SoCal, I guess you can't go really anywhere without being on a highway. But I notice as you look off to the side of the highway, you see those, what are they called? Those concrete ravines. In movies, people are drag racing in them. Yeah, like Terminator 2, they go off the bridge into the thing. Well, I'm looking at these, and I'm like, it doesn't rain that much down here, does it? Well, <laughs> I guess it's about to. Beverages. Beverages, Ed. You could do that for like 40 minutes and the pod could just be that. And I would love it. I've been having fun with the loopers lately. Man, you got like Big Daddy Looper on the floor. What I've been kind of messing around with is have a little chorus and phase on a rhythm part. Yep. And then some dry fuzz. kind of a nice sound it sounds great you know we went for a constitutional today that's right we went over to hot wire coffee yeah we did yeah i got a soy latte and that's all i'm drinking today 
Yeah, 16 ounce. I probably should have gone 20. I threw a little different thing in there with mine. Yeah. Mine is a soy latte also. Mm -hmm. It's a mocha. Soy mocha. Yeah, and I've got some lemonade. Separate, not yeah. in the mocha. That's right. Okay. I got shingles, flu, and a COVID booster this week. Shingles and flu shots. Yeah, I didn't get shingles and the flu. I and got... then thought to go get your COVID booster. Right. No. <laughs> yes. I got a triple vax thing going on. I had a rough couple of days this week. Wah, wah. So speaking of hydrated. You're probably pretty hydrated currently. With this hot wire coffee soy latte from beautiful West Seattle up there next to the post office. Jeff and the crew over there at Hotwire are kind enough to sponsor our efforts. Take care of us. Yeah. Keep us hydrated. Yes. I'm better now, John. I'm glad to hear that. Every once in a while, you're like, what do we want to do this week? And these guitars come up every once in a while, and both of us are like, ugh. Yeah, Ed and I had a conversation recently about issues we have choosing guitars, and there are lots of them. We choose a guitar and then it sells. We choose a guitar from Uncle Frank and it still needs work, or... We've done it, or there's no info on it. One or the other of us doesn't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this week? Yeah. When I asked Ed, yep. what do you want to do? Yep. Ed chose a PRS guitar. <laughs> We haven't done a PRS since, I think, year one. Yes. And I think we kind of were not kind. And that was it. I'm trying to be kinder and gentler. I'm five years older. We've played a ton of guitars. <laughs> and the thing with these is the, like, blues lawyer rep. Is it fair or are these guitars awesome and we're dumb? They are awesome. Yeah. And this one... It's subtle enough, I think, because it's got a dark finish. Those tiger stripey things don't just pop out. Is it purple? No, this is charcoal. Yeah. What we have here, Ed, is a PRS Paul's guitar. Mm. That is to say, Paul Reed Smith mm -hmm. fashioned this after guitars that he plays. So he has several sure. models that have all the features he likes. So somebody there must have been like, hey, why don't we take Paul's cool guitar that he likes and put that into production? Yep. What should we call it? Let's just call it Paul's guitar. So this is Paul's guitar. Yeah. In charcoal, and it does have a 10 top. A what? All their tops are maple. The body's mahogany. If they can find maple that is figured consistently top to bottom with no imperfections or swirls or anything else, mm -hmm. they call it a 10 top. Okay. Are there two ratings, 10 top and standard? 10 is the top, and then private stock is above that. Above 10? Yeah. Okay. Those are more rare. Holy shit, boss, look at this wood. I don't care at all what the top looks like because I just want it to be black. Yeah, and this is pretty close to it. If that's a 10 top, you can't tell until you like actually get up close and look at it. Yeah, I'll tell you what we're looking at here. You've got two humbuckers, volume and tone, pickup selector switch, and two mini toggle switches that will split the coils on each of the pickups. Love it. The inlays, as opposed to being regular birds, brushstroke birds. They're way more abstract, and they're just kind of squiggles. The one on the seventh fret, is that a bird? Like, what is that? I just like the way that it's evocative of yeah, birds. Yeah, right. That's kind of nice. And all of this is PRS made. Yeah. PRS designed bridge, PRS designed pickups. All of this is made in-house in Maryland, Stevensville, Maryland. PRS designed locking tuners. They don't lock in the back. They lock on top with a yeah. little screw on top of the post. Yep. Cool little detail here, Ed. It's a hardtail. Mm -hmm. It's nickel. And as the strings come across the bridge through the slot that is cut for them, they have drilled out and put in a piece of brass. So where the string touches the bridge, it's actually touching brass. And that's good, I guess. Yeah. More better. Yeah. Binding on the body, not the neck? Natural binding. They did not finish the side of that maple cap. You want the briefest of overviews on our man, Paul Reed Smith? You know, I have to say, some of my wanting to go back and do it was reading the history of Ted McCarty. The fact that McCarty was like, oh, all the best McCarty instruments are PRSs. 
I think that made me want to reevaluate these guitars. Yeah. Just in light of him. But yeah, hit me with that rundown. Our man, Paul Reed Smith, uh -huh. is born in Maryland in 1956. Mm -hmm. And by 1975, he's a sophomore at St. Mary's College. Okay. And he's studying math. Great. While studying math, he asks the head of the music department, hey, if I could build a guitar, could I get some college credit? <laughs> Sure. I guess he was just like, I'd like to get credit for doing something I want to do instead of math. There's a lot of math involved in the neck construction of a guitar, at the very least, yeah. right? Sure. So he did it, and he got the credit. He based the shape roughly on his favorite guitar at the time, which was a Les Paul. He was very fond of Gibsons, the Les Pauls, and the Juniors, and all of that. Yeah. And then that year, he dropped out of college. <laughs> what year did he drop out? Sophomore. Sophomore. Yeah. Man, math people, mm. they're weirdos. I've worked in computers for a while, you know? No weirdos there. Exactly. And I work with a fair number of dudes with advanced mathematics degrees. To a person, they're weirdos. Weirdo in the best possible way. I like that flavor of human. I like the diversity. Maybe just an Ed thing. Maybe that's not real. It's probably real. <laughs> <laughs> so then he decides he wants to make guitars. By now it's the early 80s. Sure. And he tries to go the route of licensing his stuff. He wants to make his own unique designs. He's not thinking of building them yet. He wants to license them. He approaches Ovation. He approaches Kramer, Guild, Yamaha. Of those people you mention, is old Kaman still around? Charles Command? Yeah. You know, I could see a natural ovation PRS. But nobody goes for it. Either they just flat out weren't interested, or maybe Paul Reed Smith was asking too much of a licensing fee. I don't really know. So it didn't happen. So he founds in 1985 Paul Reed Smith, the guitar place. Good job. In Maryland. Currently in Stevensville, Maryland. Have you been there? Stevensville? No. How about Maryland? Yeah, sure. Is it lovely? Yeah, it's nice. I picture it as lots of those old two-story rectangular box houses. Colonial houses? Yeah, yeah. Lots of that. Maybe. That's where I'd be. Colonial banger. Colonial banger in Maryland? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet it's cold, though. The East Coast over there? Yeah, it, it, temperature can go down a little bit. <laughs> So he gears up like most people do that have anything they want to introduce by preparing to go to Nam. Nam just happened. Yeah. In Los Angeles. Yeah. Anaheim. Yeah. Right outside of Los Angeles. Yes. Nam 2024. <laughs> <laughs> he makes 20 guitars to take to Nam. Yep, yep. Uh, they were all what he called standard models. Mm -hmm. They all sold. Nobody knows where those are today, but they have come to be known as the Nam 20. Nobody knows where any of them are? No, I can't say that. What can you say? Nothing. Okay. okay. I didn't bother to go on an exhaustive search to figure out who owns them. Oh. The Nam 20s, were they largely like Les Paul shape? They were very similar to what you're looking at here. Double cutaway, carved top. The top was maple. The body was mahogany. He was doing this design almost from the get-go. This was what he came up with in his head that he thought a good guitar should be. When I see this guitar, the double cut and the slightly longer top, I always think it's a Strat copy. But it's got that Gibson carved top. Yeah. But it's more Stratty than Gibson-y to me. I'm unclean. Really kind of rings. Yeah. Put a little something on it, maybe. Those are not split? right now right these are two humbuckers i am in the middle let's go neck as necky as i can get pretty necky Go as bridgy as we can get. That's nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's all humbucker mode. That's all humbucker. As long as I'm as trebly as I can go and I'm on the bridge pickup, uh -huh. why don't we flip that into single coil? Please. Humbucker. Single yeah. coil. Go in the middle position. That's a uh, Telecaster custom. Yeah. So it's humbucker in the neck and single coil in the bridge. Yeah. If I want to go in the middle, two single coils. That sounds great. Yeah. Back to humbucker mode. One thing they put in the tone circuitry mm -hmm. through a series of levers and pulleys underneath okay. there <laughs> yeah. is the ability to maintain relative volume mm. across the switching. It didn't occur to me as you were doing that. A lot of times you're tweaking the volume as you're doing the walkthrough. I've just left the volume all the way up. Yeah. No end of people have said it the most amazingly playing guitar. When you pick it up, are you like blown away by the playability of it? Yeah, it's even across the whole neck. You mentioned the neck is wider than normal. I don't tend to mind that. Yeah. For me, that's okay. Yeah. How deep is the neck? Feels like a regular old C shape. Yeah. It sounds good everywhere. It's like a Mercedes. I don't know that I could see myself going to a Mercedes dealership. But I bet they're super nice. I don't know. I'm trying to not be such an anti-snob. I guess aesthetically, you end up liking what you like. If I had to imagine that this guitar had a solid color to it and it was beat up, imagine your favorite beat up relic finish and color, everybody. Yep. Now put it on this guitar. Do you like PRS more or less? The answer for me might be more. I hadn't thought of that until right then. But yeah, I bet this thing beat to hell, body worn down. I would suddenly love it. I'm a snob against, I perceive, snobbery. I can certainly appreciate the craftsmanship and the materials on just about anything, whether it is a car or a guitar. But it's a kind of ostentation that I'm not about. Yeah, this one specifically, though, I think because the color is so dark and that top doesn't pop out to me, hold it up again. Like it's there, but it's so dark. You cannot tell that it's got that figured top. If that's your deal, it's great. I could totally see what I think in my brain is the stereotypical Paul Reed Smith person not liking this specific one because it doesn't pop. They like their figure tops over there at the PRS mothership. <laughs> so what happened next? Nam 20. Shortly after that, in 86, he befriends our man Ted McCarty. I remember him. Uh, yeah, 2001. In Maui. Yeah. Retired to Maryland? No thanks. Retired to Maui? Yes, please. Yes, please. Ted becomes a consultant to Paul Reed Smith. Yep. He took a liking to the young man mm -hmm. and decided to help out. Ted was old enough and in poor enough health that Paul Reed Smith went out to Maui to consult with yeah. the master. I think Paul Reed Smith had an obvious affinity for the stuff that was built during Ted's time at Gibson, especially the stuff that Ted designed. So it was probably a thrill for him that Ted was interested and they started working on features and designs, and the line grew from there. Mm -hmm. From what were just standards at the NAM show of 85, came the CE, which was the classic electric. It had a bolt-on neck, actually. Mm. They discontinued that in 2009 and went back to set necks, although now, these days, you can still get a bolt-on neck if that's what you want. Sure. The neck profile where it meets the body is uh -huh. awesome. There's a substantial heel on this neck. Yeah. I am told that earlier examples, when it was just Paul Reed Smith making these things, that heel was maybe a little smaller. 
I don't know if it really matters either way, at least not for the way I play. I, I don't care. They had the EG model, which was their first 22 fret guitar. This is a 22 or 24? This is 22. But back in 1990, mm -hmm. that's when their first 22 fret would have come out. The headstock is surprisingly plain. It almost feels like you'd want to cap that headstock, matching headstock to body. You know, because it's got the weird fancy bird inlays. Everywhere you hit, rings. They had artist series in the early 90s. Signature artist or artist like a step up? Yeah, I think that was a step okay. up. In 1994, I guess PRS wanted to make it official. The McCarty is introduced. It was produced in collaboration with Ted, so Ted had tremendous input on that. Yep. Ted wanted it to be more vintage in its styling. Right. And I remember at the time when it came out, seeing a McCarty gold top and thinking, wow, that thing's cool. McCarty said the best guitars are the McCartys, the PRSs, yeah. not the Gibsons. Words to that effect, he thought it was some of the best work he'd done. Yep. In 2000, they did the overseas thing, Korea. The SE models that are still available today. Do you remember the single cut they made? More Gibson-y, right? It's more Les Pauly. Yeah, it got them sued. Oh, really? 2001, the single cut comes out. And eventually, Gibson was like, okay, that's a bridge too far. They sue them. So manufacturing of the single cut had to end by 2004. But they appealed. Okay. In 2005, a federal appeals court reversed that decision and dismissed the whole case. Hell yeah. Gibson tried to have it reheard, and they failed. I think that's great. The humbucker split, and they've got the two-tone. Yeah. Hmm. A lot of times when they make the humbuckers two-tone, the colors are reversed in the neck and the bridge. Yeah. So on this one, the black side of the humbucker is... They're aligned similarly. Yeah, they're both towards the bridge. One of the attention to detail things that strikes me every time I see one of these guitars is the indentation of the pickup selector and the volume knobs. They're indented yeah, into they're the body. Yeah, they're sunk into the top. Even the mini I, switches do yeah. that. That little attention to detail craftsmanship thing is pretty awesome. There's really nothing about this not to like from a playability and sound standpoint. It's just up to you what your aesthetics are. Is it your are. jam? Yeah. Yeah, is it your jam? You gotta try it. Try and decide. Is it hello or goodbye? Buy or deny? Paul Reed Smith. Mm hmm. Marilyn's finest. Making guitars over there. Are they live free or die? Is that Maryland? Uh, are they, they that, like that's... crab state? Uh, <laughs> Who's live free or die? New Hampshire? Those guys. Okay. It's a double cut. This is one Paul might play. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called Paul's guitar. This one's in charcoal. Switching functionality allows for humbuckers or single coils head. Buy or deny. Man, this one's like such a weird thing. And I think one thing that's coming up as I get older putting ego aside i play in my little office i play for an audience of one and i play the guitars that just feel right these days it's the telecaster i play a telecaster almost exclusively yeah i'm not going on stage i'm not playing in front of people maybe having a really awesomely playing sounding cool across the neck guitar would be nice so it's terrible, but I think this guitar is pretty great. I think it's a buy. Oh, <laughs> I want to relic it. I would be so happy when the first two or three natural dings hit the body because I am not the most careful with my guitars. I wouldn't take a screwdriver to it, but I wouldn't treat it precious. 
to all the PRS heads out there that have their pencils taking <laughs> notes on this. Just imagine, if you will, I'm going to take a spray can of yeah. flat black, and yeah. I'm just going to spray it all over this thing. I would love it. How do you feel now, guys? Yeah. All right, cool. Of the PRSs I've seen, this is easily my favorite. You know, I've been pretty dismissive of them, and I don't think that's really giving the playability of the guitar a fair shake. I think for me, it's a deny just because it's not my thing. Oh, man. But I can't deny it on any technical or sonic things. Why does every guitar that has humbuckers not have many toggle switches to switch between the two? Of course you should have that. On every humbucker guitar, you should be able to split those things. I feel like it is more rare to have the Ed By and the John Deny than the other way around. It might be. How about that, listeners, <laughs> viewers? <laughs> and I actually wanted to do this one. It was your call. Yeah. So we'll take pictures of all of that. Of Ed's new favorite guitar. Ed's new favorite guitar. Ed's yeah. going to become a PRS head. Yeah, yeah. He's going to sell everything he's got <laughs> and trade them Just, over to yep. PRSs. I'm also going to become a deadhead, and I'm going to be camped out for the next six months at the Sphere watching yeah. jam bands. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll take those pictures. We'll put them yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. And you know, even if you don't do all of that, Ed, mm -hmm. you're still part of the Ruinous Media Network of music-related podcasts. You know, we had a couple of meetings yeah. with Patrick and Joe and Chris, Yeah. the, the Ruinous crew. crew. Yeah. I feel like we were on thin ice for a little while. Turns out, I think they're just intimidated. I think we scare them with our excellence. We come in so hot, they're afraid. I don't think they like our attitude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> probably think... yours, mostly. Uh, yeah. Hey, do you want to do another one next week? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay. I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye.